Come in, or we'll do it during class. Okay, this is where the world of mathematics ends. X squared plus 9 is 5. So we had a discussion. We did this, yeah? So you minus 9, minus 9. X squared is a minus 4. Yeah, X squared is a minus 4. And this is the end of mathematics. Isaac. Uh-huh. So, because the English is asking you what number times itself equals a negative 4. Are you good with this? There is no number on the real number line that times itself is negative 4. Because any number you choose from the number line, any number, if you choose a positive, a positive 2 times a positive 2 results in a positive 2. A negative 2 times itself, a negative 2 results in a positive 4. Any number on our number line times itself will result in a positive. Uh, 4, that's a 4. That's a 4. So, there is no number times itself that will result in a negative. So Rene figured out how to make this happen. Isaac, here we go. On the back. We got an we got a real number line on there? What do we put on the back? Real numbers. And you should be legit at real numbers. Okay, there is a number line that contains every number from negative infinity to positive infinity. Real numbers. Zero. One is a natural. One is a whole. One is an integer. One is a rational. One is a real. Okay, Isaac. We have got imaginary number line. Rational numbers are real numbers. So like right here. Irrational. Pi is irrational. It's real. It's right here sandwiched between 3 and 4. So irrationals are real. Because they exist. There is an exact... If you get a tape measure, you can measure exactly square root of 2. A lot of these irrationals come from triangles. So you'd have to draw a triangle. You'd have to draw this cage. This is how you create square root 2. Square root 2 comes, if you want to create square root 2, with the tape measure. You get a point. You go over here, 1. You make a 90. You go up here, 1. This is the only way to create square root 2. Then, from this dot to this dot, is exactly square root 2 because 1 squared plus 1 squared equals c squared 1 plus 1 equals c squared 2 equals c squared square root that is the only way to create square root 2 what if I want to hey what if I want to create 3 square roots of 2 You do it three times. You you blow it up three times. You do this. If you want to create three square roots of two, you make, with your tape measure, a point that's three. And it could be three feet or three inches or three whatever. Then you go over this way and you go three that way. As long as it's 90, this dot to this dot will be three square roots of two. Because 3 squared plus 3 squared equals C squared. 9 plus 9 equals C squared. 18 equals C squared. Square root. Square root. 18 is a 9 times 2. Square root 9 is 3. Square root is 2. All these square roots come from triangles. They come from geometry and trig. They're real though. This is real. This is real, 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 real. The question is, Ryland Chamberlain, he asked, can you do that with any real numbers? 
I'm talking to America. So, we got, we got two number lines. We got a real number line. And now, we have the invention of the imaginary number line. And it mirrors the real number. It's parallel. So if there is a real pi, there is an imaginary pi. If there is a real 2, there is an imaginary 2. So how do you tell the difference between a real 2 and an imaginary 2? The little i. We've got one i. So, imaginaries. If there is a little i following it, that tells you we are on the imaginary number line. Isaac, this is awesome. Your imaginary numbers behave just like anything else in mathematics, except for one day I got one magical property. If you have, let's do this. Two reels minus four reels, you end up still on the reels. Cali, two reels minus four reels is still real, negative two. If you got two imaginaries, subtract four imaginaries, you're still in the world of imaginary at negative two imaginary. Just like you got two x minus four x, you're still in the world of x's at a negative two x's. Here's the only difference. It behaves just like a variable. Kind of. What? Imaginary numbers have an I by it. I denotes imaginary. What did you say? Isaac Henderson's got a question in America? And his question is, Oh, never mind that. He was making stupid statements. <laughs> now, let's do some multiplication. If you have two, let's do two reels times four reels. Let's keep it all positive. Two reels times four reels stays in the reels at eight. If you have two imaginaries times Let's come back to that. Let's do 2x's. Let's do 2x times 4x. That takes you to 8x squared. So 2 imaginaries times 4 imaginaries will take you to 8 imaginary squared, which means you just left the imaginary number line and you landed on the real number line at a negative 8. Let's pause to address the several questions. Okay, now, so look right here. Here we go. There is a solution now to this math that was no solution years ago. So there is a solution. X squared equals a negative 4. We can find a number times itself that will result in a negative 4. But you've got to look to the imaginary number line. That number is 2 imaginary times 2 imaginary. That will result in a negative 4. Now, because it is exponent of 2, the fundamental theorem of algebra says there will be two solutions. So the other solution is a negative 2 imaginaries times a negative 2 imaginaries will also result in a negative 4. Because 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. And a negative 2 times negative 2 is also a positive 4. And imaginary times imaginary is i squared. And the only thing that we know, the imaginaries behave just like variables, except for this. If you ever 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 times an imaginary to another imaginary you leave the imaginary number line and you land 
on the real number line at negative 1? Cage, good question. What if you got three imaginaries? Here's what you know. This is it. This is the big idea, big idea, big idea. Imaginary times imaginary is I squared, which is no longer imaginaries. You leave the imaginaries and it turns real. And it is a negative one. Here's how it does it. Look, look, look. Here's how it does it. What is the... Yeah, this cage got a good question. What is what is the square root of three times the square root of three? That is a square root of three times the square root of three is three. Yeah. What is the square root of seven times the square root of seven? Seven. Okay, this is where math stopped right here when they tried to take the square root of a negative. Are you cool with this? This is look, this is good. Zero is zero. Square root of four is two. Square root of one is one. But when they tried to take the square root of a negative, this is asking you what number times itself is gonna equal a negative one. There's no solution. There's no solution. But check this out. What is Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3, yeah? Square root of 7 times square root of 7 is 7. What's the square root of a negative 1 times square root of a negative 1? A negative 1. Rylan, pay attention. Are you good with this? A square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. Square root of 7 times square root of 7 is 7. Square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1 is negative 1. Square root of Rylan times square root of Rylan is? It's Rylan. Square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 square root. That is how he invented the imaginaries. This is imaginary. This is imaginary. Imaginary times imaginary equals imaginary squared equals negative one. Please. If it's a negative, under a square root. Yes. 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 Okay. Cage. Here we go. Cage says, "What if you have i cubed? What if you got three of them?" Is it on the imaginary line or the real line? What if you have i to the 18? It's real. Here we go. i cubed is i times i times i. And every time you have a square, that's a negative 1. So this is equal to negative 1i. This guy... 18, look, I'm not going to write out 18. 18 is going to take me forever. How many squares are there? 18, is that the same as 9 squares? What do you know about every square? What's a square? It's a negative 1. So what's a negative 1 to the ninth power? That is a negative 1. A negative one times itself nine times. A negative one times a negative one times a negative one times a negative one. If we're good, how good? Try these three. Try these. Try these four. Go. What if you have forty-five of them? What if you got thirty-nine of them? Forty-two of them? Twenty of them? Go. Did we do these? Cali. Okay, out of the 45, here's all you know. The only time you're going to jump from the imaginary line to the real line is when you times an imaginary by another imaginary. An imaginary times imaginary equals imaginary squared, which equals a negative 1. That's, the, if, that's all you got to know about imaginaries. You got to know imaginary times imaginary jumps to the real. And you got to know this. One imaginary 
is the building block of this whole number system is the square root of a negative. That square root of a negative is imaginary. But if you take the square root of a negative 1 times square root of a negative 1, it equals a real negative 1. And if we call that imaginary and that imaginary, then i times i is negative 1. So if you got 45 of them, the question is this. How many of these squares are there? That's the question. And I'm going to rewrite 45 as i to the 44 times i to the 1. And I know i to the 44 is 22 squares. And I know i squared is a negative 1. So negative 1, 22 power times i is. That negative 1 times itself 22 times is a positive 1. And a positive 1 times i is i. Look at 39. No, 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 no. Well, you might be right. Okay, look, 39. 39. You need to see 39 not as 39. You need to see 39 as 38 with one left over. Now, how many, how many squares are in 38? 19. 19 squares. And then there's this one left over. And an i squared is a negative 1. What is a negative 1 times itself 19 times? It will be a negative 1 times i is equal to a negative i. Why is this one a positive and why is this one negative? That's the good question. Because this one has 22 squares. 22 squares and if you do this cage if you got if you times 1 by itself a million times it's 1 but if you take a negative 1 a negative 1 times a negative 1 is a positive 1 a negative 1 times a negative 1 times a negative 1 is a negative 1 a negative 1 times a negative 1 times a negative 1 times a negative 1 is back to a positive 1 it alternates positive 1 negative 1 positive 1 because if you have an even amount of negatives it's going to be positive. If you have an odd amount of negatives, it's going to be negative. That's right. Mm-hmm. Isaac, if you got 42 of them, what do you got? I did the 42 is what? Yes, there are 21 squares. And every square is equivalent to a negative 1. So what is a negative 1 times itself over and over 21 times? That is a negative 1. Because it's an odd amount. What do you got if you got 20 of them? You got i squared 10 times. i squared is negative 1. So you got negative 1 10 times. So you really got a positive 1. Yes. Here we go. Huh? Isaac will pay me $1 for every time I say his name in the video. He wants royalties. Here we go. Let's, okay, we've done this. Let's do this guy right here. Okay, try square root of a negative 18. Now, square root of a negative 18 is not on the real number line. It's on the imaginary number line because there is no number in the universe that times itself will result in a negative 18. So, here is the problem. You got square root of a negative 1 times square root of 18. This is the problem. The negative is the problem. But, we are going to say from here on out, a square root of a negative, that is the building block of our imaginary system. That is I. So, you are going to take the negative out and you will have imaginary square root 18. 18 has a square in it. 18 is 9 times 2. That is my square, 9. Square root of 9 is 
3 imaginaries times the square root of 2. That's it. Every time there is a negative, you are no longer on the real number line. You are on an imaginary number line. So you've got to put I. Okay, do square root of negative 125x to the fifth. Go. It's time to go. Okay, square root of negative. Take that out. That's imaginary. Okay, 125, you got to break that up. 25 times 5. 25 is, that's the perfect square. That's 5 times 5. So you're going to bring a 5 out. So with the imaginary, you've got 5. And then x to the 5th. Yes, x squared, and then what stayed on the inside? Yeah, uh, 5x. Yeah, I'm not sure the order right here. You always put the number first, because that's how many you got. I don't think, I don't think it matters. No, we're okay. The 5 is how many you got. So I got a I x squared, I x squared, I x squared. I got 5 of these things. Okay, try this one. Square root of negative 10 times square root of negative 15. Square root negative 10 times square root negative 15. Whoa. Go. Square root of negative 10. So here we go. Take out the negative, that's i square root 10. Take out the negative, so that's i square root 15. So now times your outsides, i times i is i squared, times your insides, 10 times 15. If you start pulling squares out of 10 times 15, you should have 10 is a 5 and a 2, 15 is a 5 and a 3. So You've got 5 squared times 6. And out front, you got i squared. And the square root's going to kill the square. So you got 5i squared times square root of 6, which is what you said. But i squared is no longer imaginary. It jumps to the real negative 5 squared of 6. Okay, try. Try this one right here. What's Negative two imaginaries times seven imaginaries. You should have 14. A negative two times seven is a negative 14, and i times i is i squared, which is a negative one. So negative 14 times a negative one is a positive 14. Three i times negative five i squared is three i times a negative 5i times a negative 5i. Now this is 25i squared, which is negative 25, times 3i, which is negative 75i.